Okay, we're back in Resolve 14. This is actually a recent update, 14.2. This is the studio version. Uh, Blackmagic Design actually resolved the problem that I've mentioned in a couple of my previous tutorials, where reconforming from bins with a multicam timeline actually now works, and you don't have to flatten the timeline first. So that's, that's pretty great. So I'm just going to do a very quick tutorial here, just demonstrating a sort of combination of what I demonstrated with flattening the timeline and that grading process in tutorial number seven. I'm going to sort of take that and use the same approach with groups, but with the multicam timeline. So we're back in this same multicam project, and you'll recall from the previous tutorial that we added effects and color grading to the underlying media within the multicam clip itself. So I'm going to select one of the multicam clips and simply select open in timeline. Camera four had the dead pixel fixer effect, so it still has that. But I had actually applied color grading. We'll go over to the color page here. I'd, I had applied color grading to each individual tracks for the entire duration. So this is, this is we've stepped into the multicam. So these are the actual uh, source or proxy files. In this case, we're looking at the proxies. And you can tell that each has a color grading because it's got the little rainbow box here beside each one of these. So I'm going to actually, at this point, before we go forward, I'm going to remove the color grading on these tracks by selecting all of them and then in the color menu, selecting reset all grades and nodes. Now, if you recall in the previous tutorial, I had actually taken little stills of each of the source media tracks, and I can use this to restore the grading that I had placed on each of the, of the four camera angles. So let's go back to the edit page. So I'm going to leave the effect on camera angle four, and I'll double click on timeline one here to step back out. So the key difference in the workflow that I'm demonstrating here is that we are not going to flatten the timeline. So at this point, we can simply move forward with grading the multicam timeline. So in this example, I'm actually going to group each of the camera angles. So I'll select all of camera one across this timeline by selecting the first one and then control clicking, command clicking if you're on a Mac. each of the camera one angles. And then I'll right click on any one of them and add to a new group. So we'll call this cam one. And I've demonstrated this technique before. So I'll go ahead and apply the same approach to each of the other three camera angles. And then I'll come back when I've done that. Now that I've got each of the camera angles grouped on the timeline here, what I want to do is apply a primary grade to camera angle one. I'm going to apply what is called a group pre-clip grade. And now with any one of camera angle one selected, I'll center mouse button click on the gallery still I saved for camera angle one. And you'll see that each member of the group now has that primary grade. Similarly for camera angle two, Select one instance of the group, center mouse button click on my gallery still. There we go. I'll just repeat for camera angle three and then for camera angle four. Now at this point, I probably want to tweak this a little bit because of the green cast that we're seeing in in at least three of these four camera angles. So I can do that in one of two ways. I can accept this as the primary grade and then add a serial node with a Alt S and then continue the grade on the serial node. But in this case, I'll just delete that node. In this case, I think there's nothing wrong with continuing to apply the grade. Just correct what I'd done originally with my primary grade here. Making sure that we're still in the group pre-clip mode 
I'll select one instance of camera angle one. And I'm just going to pull the green out of that, just pulling away from the green. There we go. And that's actually affected, of course, every member of the group. Now I'll do the same thing with the camera angle two. And similarly for camera angle four. Okay, so I'll accept that as the primary grade across all of these camera angles. If I want to do a special grade or give a special look to one of these, I make sure that I'll switch over to clip mode and then at this point I could do something special here. So, you know, for example, as I did in the previous tutorial, I'm going to desaturate the background by inverting this, this mask and using the color wheels palette. I'll just drop the saturation right down. You can see now that the background has been desaturated, but we've still kept the saturation of the foreground. And you'll see that this, this change did not affect other members of the group. And the reason for that is because I had this in clip mode. If I had left it on the group pre-clip or group post-clip mode, then it actually would have affected all the members of the group. As I demonstrated in an earlier tutorial, if I wanted to apply a vignette effect across the entire timeline, I could switch over to timeline mode here. I have to actually add a node. There isn't one by default, so I'll just add a corrector node. Link these up the input to the output there. Soften that mask up a little bit. You can see that I'm actually, as I drop the lift here, that I'm darkening the inside of the mask. So I'll switch back over to the uh, power windows there and invert the mask so the, dark, the darkness is now on the outside. And this, of course, applies to the entire timeline. So you'll see this, this effect on every single clip regardless of group, because I have the node editor in the timeline mode. So let's bounce back out to the edit page. All right. So you can see the vignette. You can see the desaturated background. So we've got all the grades applied at this point. So now the, uh, the proxy mode works as it did in, I believe it was tutorial seven. Now it's always a good idea to create a backup of your timeline. So at this point I can select the timeline and duplicate it. Perhaps I'll call it Timeline one final. So as I demonstrated in tutorial five, you simply right click on the timeline and reconform from bins. Now you see in resolve 14 that it has quite a few more options than it did in resolve 12.5. So I'm going to deselect all the bins and then select just the source bin. So I the current timeline, actually let me back out of that for a second. If I take, if I select any one of these and actually uh, select find immediate pool, you can see that it's actually pulled the multicam clip from inside the, the uh, proxy bin. I also have similarly named clips with a different extension 
in the source bin, as you may recall. So these proxies were all transcoded using the file uh, media management option. So back out to the timeline. So what I want to do is reconform these this multicam to the source multicam before carrying further. So I'll select reconform from bins. Select just the source bin. Now, by default, you have time code selected. In this case, we also need to select loose file match because all of these clips have the same time code. So you can't really synchronize on just time code basis. So we're actually also going to reconform based on the file names. Now, you remember that the file names of the source have an MXF extension, whereas the proxies had an MOV extension, which is why I'm using the loose file name match. Click OK. And we're now, you can tell, tell actually just by looking at how sluggish this is, but we've now linked to the source media. The important part and the fix in 14.2 is that we've retained our color grading. And more importantly, we've retained the camera angles that we'd worked so painstakingly to establish in our multicam edit. Now, if we select Find in Media Pool, you can see that it actually finds the multicam clip in the source bin. And if we need to switch back again to get more fluidity in our edit, we can simply select the timeline reconform from bins and select the proxy bin and make sure we've got the file name, loose file name match selected. Click OK. And there's there's better fluidity. So if we had to do some more cuts, the nice thing about keeping it in the multicam mode rather than flattening the multicam timeline is that we can make further adjustments to the multicam edit. That just about wraps it up. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Like